waiting. The famous waiting. fabulous Susie Ronson. She was there, right there. I was there, right there. Did you uh, did you no, I'm not fucking squeezing anyone. Because no, it's too butch in America. Beautiful wife here tonight. Enjoying the Queen event. You good? Yes, yeah, so yeah. they got me a small coffee. I was hoping you bring a bigger one. That's yeah. it. But are these for me, darling? Oh my God! You say it with flowers. Dino, look at that. The man, right? Call me. So much beauty's in the world because of him. Yes. <laughs> Thing is, it's, you can take about the same pictures. <laughs> I took Fernando to this yeah, place yeah, around the corner at the real. Oh, oh. Everything is so interconnected. It's amazing. Something going on in the culture where people aren't content to do one thing anymore. Yeah. But yeah. you get people in there. And where oh my God! You're gonna actually get that. That's wonderful. At a dirty time. Oh, that's cool. Where the fuck is it? <laughs> well, I'm not fucking going away, Jack. I'm here at least for a little while, and uh, and I am going to talk about Queen. Now, these pictures are not really in any particular order, and that's why Brian gets the first shot. He was I, something about that shot. I always like. You can see he's got his Zandra Rhodes outfit on too. I know she made. Um, she did that white tunic that I got tons of pictures of Freddie in and she made um, for the movie apparently. Now you've got to turn that fucking light off Jack. Because, look, now you get the blacks. You've got to have the blacks, you know. And, uh, and the expression, yeah. So, there was a particular period when I, before New York engulfed me, like the beast that it is, I, um, I did a bunch of work with Queen that seems to have stood somehow. I'm not saying there's some great live pictures been taken over the years by different photographers, but I don't think anybody caught what I caught in those earlier days in terms. So, in particular, of course, the one that they um, they copied for the Bo for the Bohemian Rhapsody. Video. I see that fucking director's out there lately, Bruce Gowers, and he's going on and on about how Queen ripped him off. I thought, there's going to be a moment, Bruce, when I'm going to say to you, you fucking ripped me off, Jack, so <laughs> stop whining. <laughs> but I have gone to Queen over the years and we have sorted out, because they didn't really understand the laws of photography. But I own the copyright. doesn't mean to say I can merchandise without getting into bed with them but um, um i mean i own the copyright to all of this lot as i do to 99 percent of all my photographs as is true of a lot of photographers who've been around the music business for many years i think only in more recent years the people realize the value back in those early days they didn't pay and pay they didn't want to pay and none of us knew any better because we were all so young. But the key thing was nobody ever signed a contract. And you have to, as a photographer, sign away your rights to lose to you. And they paid fuck all anyway, the bastards. And now these pictures are worth a fortune. But that's, you know, turned out to be that way. And not just with Queen, obviously, with Lou and David and Sid Barrett and uh, the Ramones and whatever. They were part of the Mick Rock collection. Anyway, that's Brian. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. I'm the one in charge. Will I be able to change picture all right? Have I got this the right way up? No, I haven't. I think that's Sound it. Down. What? Down. Is that? Yes, your mic's gone, mate. Oh, the mic? No, only because I'm not you. Ah, there we are. Now it's working. And then we really won. And my relationship was really with Freddie. I mean, I like the others, but um, Freddie was the most visually creative. And he was very, um, well, he was just a sweet person. He was, a, I really liked it. I didn't see him a lot. I was too much time around paging around Sodom and Gomorrah. 
namely America. And, um, and we saw each other a couple of times here and there. I got some followers, but I didn't really. So I was, I was involved with the early. And um, but Freddie was fabulous. I mean, I really, he was very, very lovable. Yes, he got a bit paranoid later in life because people, well, I mean, it was this thing, gay thing. I see a, a lot of fucking old queens are moaning because Bohemian Rhapsody isn't queer enough. But it's not their fucking story. If Brian and Roger want it told that way, and Mary, fuck off. Is that, I mean, if it, it could have been as queer as Christmas, as far as that would have been fine too. But whatever way they wanted to do it, it's their business. I think, I mean, it's entertainment. There is a documentary out that actually I'm in somewhere of, of, with all these gay mates. And, um, but this, this is just a story. Built her, oh look. Celia, she doubled up as my assistant and, and she also did makeup on sessions. And there she is backstage for you. Somehow I've got all the gear and go back. Look, Freddie's, I love it because I love where his wrist is at, the way his head is forward, and he's loving it. This was an early performance shot that he really loved. I mean, he does look, look a bit like Beelzebub. But, uh, but he wasn't, but he wasn't. He was, a, he was a gentle soul, really. Oh yeah, I like this one because it's those two who in the early days were definitely the main sound merchants. Freddie, of course, early on, wrote, wrote more of the music than anybody else, but Brian was tucked in behind him, and then later on Roger and John made their kind of, but I like the frenzy of this one. And this is as early as 74. I mean, they were projecting big from the start. Ah, Zandra Rhodes. Uh, that guy from, what are they called? The Struts has, had a, um, has uh, had a couple. But I notice he's got them made in a different color. I think one of them was like a burgundy color. I thought, well, I like it in burgundy. <laughs> ah, look at Freddie. <laughs> but that was the thing with Freddie was his teeth. He had a thing about his team, and so I would be careful. You know, normally I'd be a bit looser. But with Freddie, had to keep, I, wanted to keep, I wanted to keep him happy. He didn't want to show his fucking teeth. That's his call. The thing was, I remember talking to him about it. Why? Especially when he got a bit more money. Why didn't he get the fucking thing fixed? <laughs> But the truth was he had four extra teeth at the back of his mouth and he believed and in retrospect I think he was probably right that they it would have interfered with his voice it meant his throat was stretched at the back so in a, well, it was the way it was but in a way that the rest of us don't so he was probably right about that and of course he was a Parsi and he was born in Zanzibar so he had that Parsis really, I mean, they live in northern India, but they're actually Persian in origin. So he was, yes, he was from Zanzibar via India, because that's where the Parsis have been for the last few hundred years. But, then, but he's, um, I love it. I mean, the way the modern world is, and everybody's so mongrelized, a bit of this and a bit of that. I mean, the. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think people, there aren't many pictures of them around. I've got a bunch of them in the, whoops. Oh, how did I get the fucking doors again? <laughs> what did I do? Okay. I thought I did so, uh, 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 thank you. I like this one, I think I even, we even put a print of this in here. I love the outfit, and Freddie did too. But, so uh, that was Zandra. I knew her well in those. My, my ex-wife was very close with her. Very fine lady, my ex-wife. Problem for me was, I had gotten a taste for New York in the late 70s and early, and I just couldn't stay away. It was so fucking debauched. It was like, it was like, what the fuck am I doing in London? I mean, London looked, looked in, you know, I mean, even the punk thing was really more fashion. I always looked at punk as being much more New York, because that's where it started. 
and uh, and in the end the band that's come to symbolize punk has turned out to be the Ramones yeah. even though they were like a punk pop band because Joey loved um, loved uh, well he loved, he loved the Beach Boys for starters and, no he did I always thought that's great he loved the Beach Boys and, and he also loved um, what's his name Rama um, Phil Spector yes exactly now, of course, it would, anyway, that's another story. Oh. Yeah. So the, the thing about the Ramones is, Mark is doing fine. He's out there and he is the Ramones, even though he wasn't actually in the original band. Sorry, Freddie, I, I can't <laughs> help him when I get into these things. Because, uh, but anyway, yeah, but the all original Ramones are all dead. At least there's two Beatles that are still alive, you know. <laughs> Freddie, look, those are his Mercury boots. Look at them. I like that. He thought he was fucking flying. When he had that stage, <laughs> no, he did. I'm having a problem with moving it along. <laughs> Could someone free me up? I don't know how to do it. So who's, who's got... Ah, they oh. We look like sisters back then, didn't we? <laughs> look at it. The big girls don't cry. Well, actually, they did cry. Didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I really liked Freddie, and it wasn't about it wasn't about homosexual behaviour. It was it was a sensibility, and you could have tea with him, you know, and it was really quaint in a way, him and Mary, and you go over in the afternoon, maybe look at a few pictures, would you like a cup of tea, mate, you know? So he was, um, well, Freddie was just fucking Freddie, and God bless him. Look, I know the Queen, I give them all due credit for picking it up and starting again, and even that singer's pretty good, and I've worked with him. What's his name, Lee? The, yeah, nice guy. I, I, no, I did some pictures with him, he's good to photograph. But, but he's smart because he's always out there saying I'm not Freddy I'm not trying to be Freddy because you couldn't be <laughs> no I mean that whatever it is with those 14 that voice of his and of course he was a great songwriter too but uh, yeah oh look I mean he's fucking at it look look at that I like that one you can see it's not a very big place though because look you can see the feet there where was that? That's another Zandra Rhodes outfit, yeah. He had the drama, even in the early small places. He was in a stadium, and he had, a, he had like a half a million audience. Even there might have been a fat 500 people there, you know. But Freddie was in the stadium. Look, I mean, he had it all down. I like that one. But look, the leg, the pirouette. Yes, the foot, Brian as the visual foil. It's good when a lead singer has that. It's like David Bowie had Mick Ronson. The difference was, of course, actually Brian wrote stuff, whereas Mick Ronson, God bless him. On the other hand, I always think Mick was a better guitarist than Brian, my professor. Yeah, that's my humble opinion. Oh, there's Ma that's Mary. I haven't seen it, but I gather she's all over that and they like playing up the girlfriend boyfriend bit but he did leave his estate to her and I saw her a couple of times after he died and talked about it and she always said you know when he said I want to look up he knew he was dying uh, he uh, she said you know I don't, it doesn't have to be elaborate enough you know I mean she could have given him a million dollars a year and she would have been more than all right but he left the estate to her, not to the boyfriend. And, and she was just a very nice person, I have to say, and quite an innocent, really. Yeah, I like that. Look at that. He had all the swagger and all the belt. Fucking Persian rock and roll. What are you going to tell you about? Lex, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he never went to a soccer match, to my knowledge. But he liked, he would watch them occasionally. Because, because they're played all the time at soccer matches, especially in England. Uh, he, um, he said he liked looking at the soccer players' legs. They had nice legs. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that fucking thing of Freddy's. The scepter. 
He pulled that along. Well, the other three were a bit like, I don't know if he liked this thing. <laughs> but um, they're pretty snake mean. But look at it, you know. He, when he kept saying he would, they, they, they were called Queen, but that was a regal thing. He, everybody else, he goes, oh, Freddy, stop fucking around. We know why they're called Queen. <laughs> <laughs> well this the last one yeah I mean there's a lot of stuff there is a lot of stuff in here that's never been oh fuck it <laughs> I did it again please 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 I promise I, I think I know what I did finally yeah okay yeah but I need to get yeah I mean I've got a lot of they were great live acts of photograph no, no, I can't fucking get rid of this picture, I need the next one. How can we get it so I can move it along? Ah, this is actually a Polaroid of a setup that I never did. I, there was a lot of stuff like that, we, we would just play around. And, uh, and this was, I think, another one. I don't think you've ever seen any pictures. And Look how young they are, look. They're like little schoolgirls. <laughs> I always thought that, I thought they're so cute. Because they were not one of these like rough street rock and roll bands. It was much, I mean, the other three were totally straight, but they were still, you know, looked at from America. Because I remember the early years I came, used to come here. I mean, every queen in town, and I was hanging with David and all the rest of it, and uh, thought one had to be gay, instead of just being English. Oh, now I've been here long enough ago, there is something about Englishmen, I mean, especially the Southern English, and they, even if they're not, but a band like Duran Duran, you know, <laughs> obviously not gay, but they, look, they used to get a lot of hits on them when they were younger. Um, I think one of them said to me, yeah, now we're getting older, we don't get hit on by the books anymore. <laughs> like, he was a bit sad about it, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, those were the days, and the thing was, everybody was so fucking young. Yeah. Uh, that's from the, that's from that, yeah. She had a Yes, that's exactly what it is. This is not the cover shot, which is a hybrid. I think we took the hair from this one of Roger and stripped it off. But I always like this shot because they're all pissing their fucking necklace. I don't know what I said. It was something completely obnoxious, no doubt, you know. Oh, there it is again with Freddie and his big penis. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> This is what they had, they were very inexperienced though, in the, uh, I think this might have been, well I shot their first, I mean look at the stuff before what I did, it was very amateur looking, and then along came me. Yeah, so I shot them all individually too, I might have to do a composite, ah, and what I did also do was shoot variations on the cover, and oh, I have, this is a huge session I did. And I've done everything, including the polo range. Yeah, I mean, I like, I like that. I don't show them very often, and they're not, of course, hanging in the gallery, but no, there's a Roger, yeah. The girls always loved him. But he had the look, and Freddie, oh, look at that, and the nail varnish, yes, darling. <laughs> well, he got that from David and Lou, because they always at the bloody black nail varnish. Oh, don't scratch me. There we go, ah. There's a certain innocence to him that you can see there too, you know. He had his eye on the prize. I like that one. And more. Ah, this was some reflection thing. I actually did it. his apartment on the Holland, must have been the Holland Road in West London, not far from where I was born myself. I think, well, Freddie was born in Zanzibar. Farouk Bulsara. But he didn't, you could call, I called him Farouk once, so he didn't really like it, but it didn't suit him. He just didn't look like Farouk Bulsara. He looked like fucking Freddie Mercury. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was on his way. He was on his way before he was on his way. He, he was like David, the projection factor. When I first met them both, they were fucking projecting like crazy. And even in front of small audiences. They were. Yeah, so there's a lot of variations of, uh, maybe I'll do an exhibition and just 
Well, you know, in this day and age, people do all kinds of shit, don't they? I mean, you can do anything today, it seems. You know, I'm getting a bit old because I didn't think of that. <laughs> Yeah, I got more. They don't. They didn't let people photograph them. I haven't seen any. There may have been later pictures of them recording. So I was always glad I actually. Oh, something I did. Is is, is that person around who does the corrections still around? Did you? I'm sorry. I'll, I'll come and personally apologise. Is that Julia? Yes. Thank you, Julia. No, she's the dolly, that's not me. <laughs> I know you've known me a long time, Susie. So you were a bit of a dolly that, back then, Mick, but then everybody was. So was Mr. Ronson. That one got through without a research. Oh, look at it. Mm. But I like his eyes. Ah, and of course that one. Well, I, in some ways I prefer that to the actual album jacket. Cause especially because he looks like he's on his way to heaven, you know. Poor baby. That was, oh, oh yes, the topless pictures. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but they do look like schoolgirls, don't they? <laughs> this is my opinion. I mean, I got him to do on that first session. It was the first ever studio session. I managed to get him. To, I think we saw that. No, have we seen that one? We saw that earlier. Yeah, boring. Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing a Zandra Rhodes thing. Yes. Uh, oh, that'd be boring. We've seen that one before, right? Yeah. yeah. I, it happens, that shit, you know. I always like, um, oh. yeah, when we go to where he was living and did this shoot. But there's something about that <laughs> that has, uh, has drama. And tea. <laughs> Definitely has a set of choppers, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Hope oh, you can see all the band. That's, you know, I try and do that. Start John. <laughs> I don't know what happened with John. I remember talking to their manager many years later, and John had left and whatever. He didn't want anything to do with any of it other than the checks. So. And this one is actually up here. I like that. Again, very early, this is well pre-stadiums. Ah, he's in that outfit. But he, we did a great shoot. Some against a white backdrop, some against a black backdrop. Because he loved that outfit. Look at, ah, now it's the Freddie on white. Look, look at the arm gesture, the hand over the heart. He, was, he came ready to play. And I like, there's something about this one too. It's, um, is that fucking drama again? Ah, well you can see Freddie's teeth a bit here, you know? He's <laughs> ready to bite you. you know? <laughs> I just put some of this out. I thought you've got to, not just a Freddie, or Freddie and Brian, Mick. You've got to show the other girls, so. But, <laughs> with his manly chest. Well, the others were just like white Englishmen. He was fucking not like myself. He's not a fucking, you don't get a lot of hair on the chest. Well, uh, well you can see David walks around without his top on a lot, and, and he fucking didn't have any hair on his chest either. So, uh, yeah, I just put these in just to, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Now, very nice. Look, the suit. I don't know who made that suit for Brian. It's very nice. Look at it. I don't think I appreciated it fully at the time. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole other. I, I rarely show these. I mean, I show the obvious. You know. Well, Brian looked good. He did look good. Not as good as Mick Ronson, but he looked good. Now these two in the studio again. Freddie in the studio, and yeah, Brian. I like that. Some of the out of focus stuff works, works good. Ah, but those were his new sheets. I remember going over to his, to his apartment and he wanted, and the weird thing is, I can't, it's the only chrome I can find from that particular session. I've got, I've got a bunch of black and white ones when the backdrop comes out as black. But look at this was his, one of his all-time favourite pictures, because, uh, and the only time Prince ever bought a print from me, it was this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
many hours. Uh, yeah, mm, makes sense. I call this purple, Freddie. What the fuck else am I going to call it? And he's got all oh, the boots on again, the Mercury boots. Uh, I think that is the actual cover shot. I believe so. Of course, on the original cover, for some reason or other, we had it printed through a soft filter. I can't fucking remember why. Because looking at it, it didn't look so good as this, you know. On the other hand, it got a great reaction because the nature. Ah, oh, look then. This was the one that got out there a lot. Well, I really had their attention. Look at it. Yes, they weren't going to be looking nowhere else. See, this is a very small early stage at a college. Probably in December 73. Wow. Yeah. They were very tight in many ways, these two. That's, a, ah, that's one of those variations. It's, um, but I, I did a bunch of variations. just for, And this was Freddy's mirror. Fucking getting this up in a bloody elevator. That was the right performance. I only did it to keep Freddy happy. And then at some point I thought, yeah. I mean, we'd nailed the shot. <coughs> I think we should, uh, let's do something with this. And um, I love this one. Look at it. Yeah, you've got all four of them in there. I think they were recording, uh, what was it? What was the follow up album to Sheer Heart Attack? Look at Roger. I could have sold him on the fucking market for sale. <laughs> <laughs> made a lot of money. <laughs> I like the other white queen. They, well, they were obviously, ah, motherfucker, what's wrong? He did it again. <laughs> He's breaking my fucking flow, you know. I could keep swearing, but I think they'll be sick of that in a couple more minutes. Is somebody dealing with it? Uh, uh, uh. But I like these pictures. These were kind of the opposite. I don't know if they were shot the same day or a day apart. And the band, the other three, weren't sure what what should be. They were shot as options. What should be the front cover? I mean, Freddie and I knew. But I think the others were a little bit intimidated by it because they weren't such a big deal at the time. No, still having problems? Gabriel, it's your fault. Gabriel fucked up. No, blame him. I don't fucking care. You can take, they can put the boot in on him. Okay, what's, what's going on? Anyway, so this could have been... But thank God. Whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Turn it down. Oi! Right. Do you want the lights on? No, I want the fucking lights on. <laughs> Bring the lights on. It's the last one. Jesus. It's the last photo. What? Last one. Yeah, there'll be three more. I know, they told me I was going to have to shut up at some point, but... <laughs> I put, no, they did. It's like a dick. They're running a dick. There are others, aren't there? Is that it? The last one? Is it the last one? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. We can take a few questions if you want. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about the bad language. On the other hand, it's become everybody swear. Have you gone bloody what do you call it on uh, um, on cable? And all the hot programs are all swearing, motherfucker this so I've heard it. I'm going, it's all right for me to do it. Because I'm an honorary New Yorker. What's, what's going on? No, you can't take it away. But I am prepared. We're announcing that we're going to take a few questions. Yeah, I am prepared to do that. You're not fucking getting hold of it. I've got my eye on you. So I'm prepared to take a couple of questions if anybody gives a fuck. <laughs> I was there, I did breathe the same air, I did pinch bottoms, yes, so... When was the last time you saw Freddie? I saw him in New York at a Queen concert, 
What's the I want it? Guys, we're just going to uh, take a few questions from the audience so we can all keep it down for a little bit. And um, yeah, give it to me. Oh, no, okay, yeah, he, he said it, I didn't say it, so. But, questions, and I'm not doing this for long, so if you want a question, hurry up and ask it. That lady over there in the hat and with the camera, yes. I was so curious, the very first time you went to Florida. I went to what? The very first time that you were going to Florida already. Yeah. You know then immediately how photogenic the house Can you repeat the question? She is asking, when I first met Freddie, did I realize how photogenic he was? <laughs> you can't really tell until you get something in front of the camera. I mean, he was a nice looking man, but then so were the band. The thing about Freddie was I got an immediate rapport with him and creatively. And he, uh, but no, I couldn't, you can't just all oh, him. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I, I had taken a lot of photographs of David Bowie, so I, and more pictures of Sid Barrett than anybody else ever did, and, and a young Lou Reed. And, I mean, these were beautiful men. So, by instinct. But I wasn't thinking about it, like, going into it, I was, I don't work like that. I work very existentially. I work on yoga and meditation and chanting and math, that kind of stuff. So I get opened up to the situation. On the other hand, that fucking Queen 2 album cover, that was a right laugh. Because we had ladders and they were up and down the bloody ladders and in the mirrors, you know, they were, and Celia was there and she was helping them with the makeup. But every Polaroid, I've got a series of Polaroids, you see me building up to the Queen 2 album cover set up. But they had me, they were a right bunch of old little queens, so um, in the best sense of the world, of course. You get this great scene all What was the last time you saw Freddie? Thank you. I saw him at a concert in New York, but it must have been. He must have been in the 80s, because he was dead by the early 90s. So, uh, yeah, I've got a picture of him, we're both looking, mm -hmm, give us a kiss, definitely. <laughs> no, I mean, he, you know, pulled out the camp at each other, and, and he's ready for it. And I having hung around so many gay men when I was young, I was camping with most of them, you know. Jimmy, you know Jimmy? He yeah. calls me a straight pop. <laughs> so, are there any more? What was your first session and what was your last session photograph? I think it was in November, uh, December of 73. I can't really remember, it must have been 75 sometime. But um, after that, I didn't get here till 76. But I was sniffing New York, you know, kept slipping away. Because New York was more fun. You wanted to be a bad, bad boy. London was just, you know, London, they don't call that punk fashion, but it was more about the fashion. Once I sniffed the barrel, and it was pretty fucking disgusting, let's be honest. You know, they romanticize it now, but it was, if you go to CBGB's, that was a fucking piss hole. I mean, it was, but that was, you know, very exciting. I don't know that I was that excited by it. I, it was a bit, you know. On the other hand, I do have photos of it. But I was photo that I went to Liverpool once to do a show, and the guy that looked after John Lennon's house, that Yoko had organised from when he was a kid, I, I was, I, I think, oh, maybe Paul McCartney's brother I met, uh, Michael McCartney. And uh, he organized it so that me and the people on the could go in. But you weren't allowed to take any pictures inside. However, I went into the fucking toilet and took pictures of that toilet. I thought, yeah, I'm, you know what I'm gonna call that? John Lennon pissed here. <laughs> because he did piss there. So, um, All right, we'll take another question, one more question. Oh yeah, he's a tough guy tonight, yeah. Is there anyone that you never got to shoot that you always wanted to? I tell you, mostly it's... Repeat the question. Is there anyone that you... He wants to be fucking disciplined about it. Who did I... 
Was there anyone that I would have loved to have photographed? But I didn't. I mean, there's scores of people I never photographed. But um, they were kind of the ones I really would want, which probably makes the most sense. I couldn't have done. I was far too young to take those pictures of Elvis that were my friend Al, that I got to know later in life, Al Wertheimer took. That Elvis kiss scene, you know, laying down, reading the paper. I would have loved, Elvis was unbelievable. I mean, he was the most folk. If you see those very young pictures of him, not when he was starting to get a bit jowled. I mean, he was an incredibly beautiful young man. And a wonder. Even if he hadn't been able to sing the way he did. And then um, Bob Dylan, who I read certain of those albums, like Highway 61, and Blonde on Blonde, that's really. And he had a look, and it was both, it was an amphetamine look, really. I know what the fuck was up to, because I knew his mate later in life, uh, called um, Bobby Newell. And they were speeded out of their brain. But he was so very skinny with the hair, the shades, the scarves, the, the skinny outfits. And, uh, but the best would have been Keith Richard at the time of uh, Gimme Shelter. I mean, I have barely picked up a camera and I certainly haven't been to California. But he had the look. So Mick could now Mick aspired to, but Nick Mick was a bit too fashionable. Keith had that locked down like that gypsy rock and roll out of order. And that's it. I think I've, for me to finish up talking about Keith Richard, who I never really photographed, but admired from afar. I think um, I would go and grab as much booze as they've got. I don't know. I don't. I don't drink personally. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Very yeah. 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 Freddie Mercury. Whoa. Motherfucker could sing. Boy. He said could sing often, as everybody knows too. I don't know. I'm trying to get out of here. I need some. Oh, uh, it's, it's just so amazing. And I think it's a, an absolute merging of amazing, amazing talent. That man had fire. He did what he did. He was in the right place at the right time, man. But he. Oh my God, this is just one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. Do you like the show, honey? Yeah, I like it. You like the show? I love the show. Oh my God, yes. Loved it. Always love everything at this gallery. And... I'll do that. Thank you so much. I'm okay. Anna. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, just how you talk fan. to me. Oh. Talk. So I want you hugging me, because you're awesome. <laughs> Enjoyed your little anecdotes. I'll be over there, but... It doesn't start yet, no, it doesn't start till 9 to 10, yeah, so we've got plenty of power, never going to Rare power. Right, that's the... <laughs> I did a deal with Sony. Yes, they took the black and white, I let them colorize it. So what do you girls think about that book right there? at the Morrison Hotel with Mick Rock, Freddie Mercury, and the rest of the boys. Great, great night. Mick's got the best pitches. Look, look how long it keeps going on. Look, no. No, but it's going to be what you like. This is classic piece. I'm going to turn it off for a little while. What? Well, we should go out afterwards. I don't think we should be doing it in here. <laughs> But this, Whatever you want. I, I've seen the, I like these. Do I have to press it? Where would you get this? It's my best friend. Uh, okay. I've done this all the time. I've done this all the time. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys that know guys. Yeah. 4,000 hours. Well, I would know more guys that know guys than you would. <laughs> Different kind of guys. He likes it. 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 Oh, okay. From Bobby. You guys have been buddies for many years. Well, that's fair. You're always in one of the games. Freddie and Mick Rock. I mean, after all.
And who's that character? But anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. A beautiful night. Let's do it. We gotta do it. We gotta do it. Yeah. Take your to see what we do. Yeah. Let's do it. You wanna be that side? I'll be there. All right. You ready? Excellent.